Hello and welcome to Weird Heat. I'm Brian Altano. This is Max Scoville. And Weird Heat is a show about concepts and ideas and themes and basically taking one word or one thing and having a loose uh, kind of laid back conversation about yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like we're really like, saying the whole concepts and the themes thing. It's, this episode is about cooking. Though. This is about cooking. If you're trying to learn how to cook, this video will not help you. <laughs> Probably not. We're not actually going to help you do that. It's yeah. more about the idea of cooking. There's no recipes in this episode, really. Uh, this is about... It's like an existential cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about cooking. Um, what... What is cooking? <laughs> uh, cooking is when you take... I, I feel like this is one of those things they ask kindergartners and they write yeah. like a really funny, like incoherent mess of words. Um, cooking is when you take a bunch of things mm-hmm. that are, you can eat and you combine them to make them more good to eat. <laughs> is that is that good? Did I, I think do that's pretty good. Job? Yeah, I think um, cooking is a transformative art in which... <laughs> You break down ingredients uh, through creativity to ultimately feed sustenance. Yeah. Which is a dumber, longer way of saying I, the same thing you just said. Yeah. No, I mean, it's funny because people are always like, oh, I can't cook. And it's like, well, how how can't you cook? How mm-hmm. bad at you? How bad at cooking are you? Yeah. Because like, people are always like, it's also worth noting. Cooking and baking are totally different things. Yeah, we'll get into that yeah, for sure. But um, uh, but I mean, like cooking, people are like, I can't cook. And I was like, well, did like, what are you trying to cook? And what did you like? What did you do wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, like, did you try to make a souffle and then you yelled at it and it collapsed? Yeah, yeah. Or did you I, did you like try to make a grilled cheese sandwich and set your house on fire? Because yeah, those or, are very drastically different things. Did you did you like you know did you boil a sandwich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you try to cook something that wasn't food to begin with? Exactly. Like, <laughs> That's possible. That happens a lot. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing about cooking is that it is something um, that inherently, at a very young age, people do for you. It's not like it's not like crime. Which is something that you you just start doing. Mm-hmm. Cooking is not something you really you fig, you figure out on your own. Um, well, maybe you do eventually, but people cook for you when you're a kid. Um, cooking is is basically effectively designed for sustenance to keep you alive, to keep you here on planet Earth or wherever you're listening to this show, and um, everything seems to be going well for a little while. And for that, you're you're good, you're happy, you're you're thriving. Cooking then gets interesting because it's bec- then it becomes optional. And it's, it's, a, it's a thing that's now optional because we live in a service-based economy, which is different than what we had hundreds of years ago, or even 50 mm-hmm. years ago. Nowadays, if you don't want to cook for your entire life, that's a thing you can successfully pull off if you either have A, people cooking for you, or B, enough money to order food from wherever. Yeah, or just packaged food even. Or packaged food, yeah. yeah. So even then, so just going into a store and buying something and microwaving it, um, not necessarily cooking. Um, it, there's a, That's a very kind of, no pun intended, boiled down version of that. But you effectively are getting the same result, which is food. That said, cooking is, I think, something that uh, a lot of us love to do and a lot of us are terrified of. Very specifically because when you're cooking for different scenarios, um, the result and the process changes drastically. When you're cooking for yourself, um, it's exhausting and it's daunting and it probably feels like something that isn't really worth doing because you're funneling all this creative energy into something that you're not showing anyone or sharing mm-hmm. with anyone. And it feels almost isolated and lonely. It's kind of masturbatory in a weird way. In, in a little bit, in a, in a weird way it is. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's sort of like if you're cooking for somebody else, it's like, it's like sex. Like you're yes. coming out and you're like, I've prepared this for you. And you you played it, you put it out. Like you put, there's some pride in it, mm-hmm. but like, I feel like cooking for yourself has like people have redefined it as like as meal planning. Yeah. Like you're, you're, it's not even so much, it's this thing that you do, you get it out of the way. Like you just go in the corner, you're like, you know, like you, yeah, you, you eat you the go, eggs and you make the salad and you put you it in a box. To like fitness dudes on Instagram and they're all like, they have these photographs on Sunday of like, they're, they're like, I made 70 boiled chickens and put them into little individual boxes. And it's you're not, like, okay. and it's like not, it, it's so utilitarian and Spartan, yes. you know, like there's no, there's no, there can be like flourish to it, but for the most part, that's missing the point. There's you know? an assembly line to it. And I think that it loses, um, in what it, it in what it gains in sort of sustaining you throughout the week, it loses the spontaneity that I think comes with, um, some cooking. Now on the, on the flip side, there's cooking for others, um, which is something you do when you live with someone else or you have friends coming over or family or something. And the interesting thing with that, um, is that it suddenly becomes 
performative and daunting and terrifying because now you're not your only judge anymore as you are in masturbation. Yeah. <laughs> you are creating something for a group of people to now interpret and ingest and uh, possibly get yeah. sick from. No, exactly. Yeah. Like I feel like the, the, yeah, cooking for others, is, it, it really does work with the whole the sex comparison. Yeah. Because I don't know if you're bad in bed, people are like, what the, <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's rude to be like, hey, that was fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. But if you like cook somebody like the worst thing ever and you're like, I made you this and or there's not enough of it or like it's it again makes them sick. There's that thing where you're like, shit, I don't know how to tell you this, but like that was a bad time. Right. And, and <laughs> the only judgment in masturbation is personal. Yeah. Yeah. If you, so. if you, if you screw that up, that's your own private shame and yes. no one has to know about it. Which is interesting because I think that like we are not to keep going with the sex thing, but we are inclined to make probably worse decisions than we would when we're cooking for ourselves uh, in the same way we would when we're masturbating. Yeah, there's no judgment there. Yeah. You're like, like you, can just, you trash the kitchen, maybe you leave the dishes in the sink for yeah. a day. What's or the for, sock what's, on the floor. It's like, what's, what's for dinner? I don't know, like six Cinnabons. Like, you're yeah. like that's not... <laughs> exactly. Eh. And so um, you mentioned you mentioned baking. I, I want to I point out something that I've, I've believed for a very long time, which is that... Um, Cooking to me feels kind of like painting or, um, you know, sort of like podcasting or freestyling or something like that. There's a, there's a, an energy and a spontaneity to it. Um, it feels like listening to jazz music. Where jazz is perfect, yeah. Yeah, and then baking, on the other hand, feels like math or science or listening to classical music or something that's incredibly sort of mechanical. No, you, ba- baking is like the chemistry or architecture yeah. of, it's engineering practically. Um, both of those forms of creating something edible for sustenance or decoration or performance or whatever um, have a sort of degree of following directions. With baking, I would say that there's significantly less wiggle room and room for spontaneity and creativity. If you, I don't know, wing it on the measurements and baking, you end up with like... Mm -hmm. Bread soup. Yeah, <laughs> and like, no, I think it also that's. I think that's something like that's worth noting. I don't, I don't think a lot of people know that. I mean, a lot of people who are like, I'm terrified of cooking. I can't cook. It's mm-hmm. like, well, why do you say that? Did you try to make a cake one time and it and it it blew up? You know, yeah. like it fell apart. Like, because if you, I don't know, if you if you screw up at cooking, and then you it it gives you that like that bad experience. You're like, oh, I can't do this. And it's like, well, have you have you tried to make like I don't know like chicken? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, that's the thing, right? I think that like um, it's so the the ceiling for for cooking is 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 the sky, is space, right? It's limitless. It's 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 somewhere any be, anything between making a grilled cheese mm-hmm. and making you know a souffle or making something that's like you know basically astronomically impossible to understand. When you go to a really nice restaurant and they're they're doing you know they're doing things like you've never seen before. They're doing like basically micro fusion that you're you're eating bubbles and shit like that you're like yeah. i don't even understand this i cook all the time i go i go to nice restaurants where they do stuff like that and it feels like almost like parlor tricks sometimes it feels completely insane to me um and so i think that like that's what scares a lot of people from it was is because like you can get by for so long without needing it until there's a point in time where you're you kind of realize like i i could learn this mm-hmm. right now or i could just keep eating Something that's I mean, in the store. A testament to how like how difficult like baking is in terms of sort of other cookings. It, like, a bakery is a thing. Like mm-hmm. a bakery is a is a is a place that people go because it's it's effectively more trouble than it's worth. Yeah. Whereas there's no there's not really anything else sh- like that isn't a restaurant that you go to where it's like, hey, can you um can I get that thing that you prepare me? You know, mm-hmm. like there's no there's no like <laughs> there's no like stir fry equivalent of like a bakery. You know, like there's yeah. no like yeah. obviously there again there are restaurants, but like there's no place where you're like. Yes, that uh, that thing you cook stovetop. Like, there's no version mm-hmm. of that. I I find cooking really interesting um, because it's, it's we have a we have a very complicated relationship with food um, in in this country in this world, um, and I think it's because we have a tendency to really appreciate the quality in the media we consume and the things we watch and the music we listen to and um, there's there's like you know, there's Yelp for restaurants, but there isn't really like a Rotten Tomatoes for food. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes is a food. That's, it's yeah, not that's a, a weird, weird way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like if you say like, oh, this, I'm not going to go see this movie because it doesn't have a good review. Um, you might flip, you might turn and, and eat it at a place that, that doesn't have great food just because it's convenient and it's easy. Um, and I think a lot of people get scared off by cooking because it is daunting and is terrifying. But when you start with very basic stuff, 
um, it's easier it's easier to learn and understand. I think when I was less healthy, cooking was almost easier because cooking when you're not eating great food is pretty simple. It's like, I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, I used to cook, I asked my wife, I was like, am I a good cook? And she was like, yeah, you're a great cook. And she was, I was like, we've been together for seven, seven, eight years now. Have, have I always been a good cook? And she was like, you showed promise. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what does that mean? And she was like, well, back then, cooking to you was basically like, tonight we're going to make cheesesteaks. And so how do you do that? You get an onion, maybe you get a pepper, um, and then you get some like, you know, frozen, some shitty steaks, some bad steaks. And you, you cook it all in a pan, and then, uh, or just microwave, some people just heat it all up at once. And then you put it between bread and you put cheese on it. Yeah, it's a hot sandwich. It's a hot sandwich. Yeah, that's not really cooking. It's not you know? really cooking, right? But I guess, like, because you are you are chopping an ingredient and you are uh, you are basically putting something over an open flame or a grill, something like that. When you remove the bread, which I try to do as someone that's eating healthy, if I was to take those exact ingredients, that would be a plate of cheese meat, <laughs> and it would look insane. <laughs> so now you're left going, okay, I have. I have more space on my plate. I need to fill it with something. What should I do? So then you got to go like, okay, well, I, I want to add another element. What should, something good here would be a vegetable, something green. Like I try to think of cooking as the same way I think of drawing or photography. There's rule of thirds a lot, right? Yeah. I don't really have a lot of foods. A, a lot of dinners for me is like a three component thing. It's like um, there's a protein, you know, like so like a meat or a vegetable or, or a meat or a fish or something like that. Then there's like um, – either two types of vegetables or one type of vegetable and like a starch, like a, you know, sometimes it's a pasta, sometimes it's a piece of bread, sometimes it's potatoes. And then your third thing is always like, you know, spinach or zucchini or, you know, uh, broccoli or something that you can either yeah. microwave or blah, 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 blah. But when you're not eating healthy or when you're just kind of eating whatever you want, um, you can, you can basically put anything you want on that plate. And like, it's a lot of, it's, it's pasta and you put sauce on it or it's like, it's macaroni and so, you put yeah, it's a lot on of it. it's a lot of two parts. A lot stuff. of two parts. And then they'll be like, if you get if you get that version of it at a restaurant, there's like you know you get like a burger and fries, and then there's like a pickle. Yeah, you know, or you're like, oh, it's like fried chicken and like mashed potatoes, and then there's like coleslaw, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's like some like weird little thing on the side. Yeah, you know, like, the fuck oh, is the third the thing? Fuck, the fuck is that? Which is weird when you're thinking about breakfast because a lot of people are just like, I have eggs for breakfast, and you're like, what else? <laughs> That's really weird. I don't you know? know? Yeah. Bacon, too? Um, like, no, like, the cheesesteak thing is really funny to me. I just, I distinctly remember when I was uh, in college, uh, me and a friend, we, I think we, I think we, like, rode bikes to the Safeway. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, we didn't have a car, which is weird. And we got one of those, like, we, we were like, we we're like, we need to be, we need to be better about, about cooking. We need to be, like, adults. We need to, like, cook more. And so we got one of those, like... <laughs> Like five pound things of hamburger meat. That's oh, like yeah. it's like all the peckers and snouts or whatever. Yep. It's like it's like eighty five percent fat or something. You're like, what the? F what did you? What part of the cow did the, you? Fucking the one put on in the there? styrofoam tray where where you lift the, it, the, the tray like bellows yep. a little bit, and it's and like leaking. Oh, it's like bleeding there. You're God. like, what the fuck is that? And we got that, and we were like, we're like, yeah, we're trying to we're trying to like cut carbs, <laughs> or we're trying to be more healthy. So we just like we made this like f disgusting like hamburger omelet thing that yep. was like it was like eggs and burger meat, and then we put like a bunch of we got like one of those like things of like you know welfare cheese or whatever mm -hmm. and we like fucking rode our bicycles with like the Safeway bags and <laughs> we like went back and it's like that's how children cook but we were adults and we yeah. cooked there was nothing preventing us from being like you know what let's go online let's look up a recipe let's learn how to cook something and at that point in time I was like yeah I sort of know how to cook I can mm -hmm. cook some food and like going I mean I had kind of the same thing you know in my relationship like early on I was like I know how to cook you know, and then I'd go to like, I don't know, I'd go to fucking Walgreens and get eggs, yeah. you know, like shit yeah. like that where you're like, I don't know, what's what's accessible? It's like not wanting to really, you know, not wanting to go into the deep end of the pool. Well, uh, I think the, the, like the tools and ingredients side of it is incredibly important. It's the same way if you were like, you know, if you're like, I want to start drawing and you're like, well, cool, here's a stick with blood on it. Exactly, yeah. Like, well, no, I need a good pen. So I think that like, I took, um, I got as a gift uh, a knife skills class like five or six years ago and it came with a free knife it was like one of those things where i was like i don't need a cooking class i come from a long family of cooks and it's like yeah but you don't know what you're doing like i think yeah. a lot of people they walk into a kitchen and they go time to cook and then what does that even mean where do you start right mm -hmm. like you you i know when you when you're drawing you open up your sketchbook and you start drawing and it makes sense there's a there's an iterative process there there's steps to it but with cooking if you handed 20 different people 20 different knives and 20 different onions 
all of them would would hack that thing differently. And that room would smell terrible. It would, and everyone would be crying. Yeah. Um, and one guy would cut his finger, yep. and another guy would like pull out his knife that he's had from the 60s that he's never sharpened. And so like I think step one for cooking has always been for me, get a good knife. Like Make sure you have a decent tool set. You get a good frying pan, you get a good knife, and you have some good silverware and some nice plates to eat on. We got a garlic press, yeah. I think, last year. And that's like one of those things. I always thought that was like a stupid like a stupid accessory that you don't need. And then once you get one, suddenly it's like, it's indispensable. And we, I don't know how we lost our garlic press and mm-hmm. we were like panicking yesterday. We're like, where's the fucking garlic press? We need the garlic press. <laughs> yeah. And Jen's like, I'm going to go on Amazon right now and order one. And she went and like, you know, we like, we needed that garlic press because we've gotten so accustomed to that being part of the process right. of preparing food is having, you know, it's like, it's like, I'm not going to cut up garlic like an idiot with a knife. Like I need that mushy shit. <laughs> like, get, mm-hmm. Give me that, that mushed garlic. But like, I don't know. There was a point in time when it was like we had like hand me down pots and pans and like one knife that was like bent at the end and just like you know you don't you don't think about it too hard. You know? Oh yeah. There's I mean, that- going going to my parents' house and seeing like the stuff that my dad has that he cooks with is stuff that they bought in the '80s that they never really stopped to think there's a better way of doing this. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing has happened um, over the last ten or fifteen years of stuff like the Food Network popping up, which is a is a is a television network completely dedicated to showing. How fun it is to cook, but also um, basically cutting into the performance aspect of it, turning it into contests and stuff like that, celebrity chefs, all those things. It's it's created this wave of people who are cooking for the first time, which is awesome, which has also created a market that feels the need to flood itself with single-use kitchen items. So, for example, we we saw something that was basically like – I mean there's stuff that it's like it's it, – you can, you can core a strawberry – which I guess for some people that's necessary, but for most people, like I don't, I don't need that. There's a, there's a machine that you can put cherries in and it will pit them for you. Mm-hmm. You know, like your mouth. <laughs> but do you, I, I feel like so many houses that I would go in growing up had melon ballers. Yes. What the? Who needs a melon baller? I don't know. I don't know when. At what point in time was it? Like when people were all drinking like Harvey Wallbangers or something, and there's some uh, yeah. there's some like weird '80s drink. They were like, you gotta have the melon ball in there. It's it's the part of it. It's the it's the best thing. Well, I you know like um Jello molds. Jello like, molds. Yeah. yeah, I think that like there's a uh, there's a both a cyclical, iterative, and also kind of um, trend based culture in food and cooking and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And now um, with photography being so prevalent. I read a thing about how like foods that aren't sexy in photographs aren't being eaten as much. Like soup, no one's. <laughs> how many? What's your favorite soup Instagram? You know. Yeah, yeah. But like uh, soup's a great thing to cook because it's it's effectively it's it's. The, I like to cook a lot with a, a lot a lot of sort of like kitchen cleanouts. I like to call them where you just open up your fridge and you take like five or six different things and you make a stir fry. Right? Yeah, no, totally. Or you make you make a soup, or you make a salad, or something like that. So it's a really easy way to get rid of a bunch of stuff at once. That's maybe kind of rubbery or wilty. You mm-hmm. know, when you get that broccoli that looks like a rubber pencil, you get to that point. Um, but I started. I I start. I I'll put it this way. My my mom was an amazing cook, um, and my dad was awful. And my dad uh, conventional. My, it happens. My my mom went back to college in her thirties. And all of a sudden, she was going to night school and, 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 and working, and she had three kids. And my dad was like, it's time for dinner. I'm going to make uh, sloppy joes and cheese it chicken. And we were like, what the fuck is that? And he was like, oh, you take a box of Cheez-Its, and you crush uh-huh. it up, and then you roll it in chicken, and then you deep fry it. And my mom would come home and be like, what did you guys have for dinner? Why are the kids hair falling out? <laughs> <laughs> Our boys are sick. What happened? <laughs> and so like it was it was pretty easy to see really quickly like my dad didn't know what he was doing. But out of necessity, he learned. Um, and then little by little, he learned to cook more and more and more. But he started off with stuff like Sloppy Joes and cheese at Chicken. And then when I was 16, 17 in high school, uh, there was a class called Foods. It was just called Foods. Foods 1 and Foods 2. And I was like, what's this about? Because they didn't want to call it cooking. Um, because I think they thought they'd scare people off or that only women would attend the class. It was mostly women, but it was about food. That is a way to lure more men in is just write foods on the door. Yeah, They're like, exactly. num, 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 what's in this room? I love a good food. <laughs> One and two. <laughs> Great. And so we went in there and they paired us off into teams. And me and my best friend at the time, Gus, who um, who worked on that album, Robot of Bots, with me, we were in this cooking class together. It was funny because that was the first sort of creative thing we collaborated on was like, Weird recipes are for things that we never cooked before. And we cooked stuff like chicken Alfredo and angel food cake. And I learned very quickly how, um, how, 
what what recipes to lean towards and what which ones I didn't. Like I, I was like, man, angel food cake is pretty easy to make. It also requires like twelve eggs. And if you're broken in college, cooking twelve eggs for one cake is kind of fucking stupid compared to having like a fried egg with breakfast every morning for twelve days, you know? Mm-hmm. Or cracking them in ramen or something. Well, yeah, like an that. angel food cake isn't exactly like a priority food, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Well, I was taught by a woman who was born in the nineteen fifties and, you know, brought her sensibilities into it. And so uh, I went to college being like, I know how to cook. And I came home from college once and my parents were both tired and I was like, I will cook dinner. And I took this like frozen steak out of the freezer and I thawed it in the microwave or probably just microwaved it. And then I stir fried it with spaghetti and broccoli and tons of soy sauce and salt and pepper. And I made this like mountain of salted mush. And I sat down and I made myself a vodka soda and I was like, this is great because I was in college and I was like, this, I'm an idiot. I just eat. Yeah, no, it was like my hamburger disaster. Yeah. Yeah. And my, and the difference was like, I fed the hamburger disaster to my parents Mm. and they both just kind of sat there and I think they were like, you you tried tried, and like, we feel bad. And so I was kind of embarrassed by it and I didn't want to cook for anybody for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, I had the same thing happen when my wife and I first started dating where I cooked for her. I fucked it up so bad and I didn't want to cook for a very long time. And so stuff like that can really scare you off forever. But I think that like what, what, what has to, I think what has to happen there is that you practice at home a little on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you, you, you teach yourself a little bit more every single time Mm -hmm. following basic recipes is, is like really simple. That's the thing is I think to treat a recipe like a thing you cannot deviate from, with the exception of baking, if it's yep. if it's just cooking, like it's okay, and I think people are scared of that because it, like it's like a pinch of salt. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> How much do you pinch? Do you pinch? A, like, is this a? It's like a big like a <laughs> you know like what do you do there? And it's it's okay to go off the off the beaten path a little bit. You know, it's a, it's an idea. It's sort of a you know it, it points you in the right direction. It's yeah. a framework. And if if you're like oh, I don't have this thing, you can substitute it with that. But if you like, I don't know, if you just have a recipe and you're like, I'll use what I have here, you're like eh, that might not go so well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have an interesting relationship with food because my mom was a chef, uh, like a professional chef. It like she had I think three restaurants. Um, there's a, like there's a write up about her in Vogue about how she wore like high heels in the kitchen. Like she, I had my first Thanksgiving dinner in the states at Julia Child's house. Um, like she's my mom like was was you know running with some 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 big people, but wow. then she had me and I screwed all that up. So she was it was interesting because I had a single mom who was like an incredible chef but was also a single mom. So she'd be like, I'm sorry, honey, I don't, I don't have time for anything, anything good for dinner tonight. And she'd like whip something up. And I'd be like, you know, like it was, you know, it was like single mom food. It was like pasta, but it was like really good pasta. Mm-hmm. And it would be, you know, she'd be, we'd be like trying to save money and we, you know, we were broke and stuff. And like there were, it was, it was like really, really well prepared kind of, you know, simple, cheap food. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there were things I picked up here and there as far as cooking goes, but mostly I kind of inherited this like, I don't know if snobbery is the. I mean, it was it was being a you know being a, a, a gourmand, being a you know having right, a having right. a good a good sense of what what good and bad food is. I remember my mom going to um, you know Stop and Shop or Safeway or whatever, and going to the, the the butcher department and being like you know asking for a cut of meat and coming home and looking at the meat and being like these these people don't know this is this isn't a butcher and I was like it's not it's a guy who like I went to high school with like there's a you know there's a person that, that's just a job yeah you know, there was a point in time where being a butcher was like being sort of a sort of like a coroner for animals almost like mm-hmm. you had to have like you had to know your shit you knew all the cuts there's that like the cut out of the pig and like where, where all the parts go like that was the butcher's job they would just bring him a dead animal and he'd cut it up and turn it into different things it was a specific building design for it yeah you know? like there was a guy that like started a shop for that yeah whereas nowadays that's just in the corner of like walmart or safeway or yeah, something now else. now like these things show up in in packages and you know here's a here's a big bag of of strip steaks and you know they're strip steaks because they stay that say that on them but they yep. don't know how to cut something to make that you know to transform part of an animal into that so i don't know like i came at food with that sort of that perspective, but that didn't stop me from in college getting the, the giant, you know, like $5, five pound thing of, of mm-hmm. shitty hamburger meat. Um, and I don't know, there were, there were sort of some things that I had in my head, but at the same time there were basics that I never picked up on. Um, like going back to the sort of the food comparison, uh, the girl, I, uh, the, the food sex comparison, I, the girl I, I lost my virginity to, uh, at one point I, I made her eggs for breakfast um, and I was like, Hey, I'm going to cook you breakfast. And she's like, Oh, that's so sweet of you. That's awesome. You know, like what? And I was like, how do you, how do you like your eggs? And she's like, you know, like sunny side up. And I was like, shit, I don't, 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to cook an egg like that. And I made her this egg that was like, you know, it was like burnt on the bottom and like still like gelatinous on top. Oh, not, yeah, not like, the worst kind. Like the white wasn't cooked thoroughly. Yep, yep. And I didn't know how to do it. Like, I, I don't know. I just turned the stove on probably on like high all the way and then put it in the pan and just sort of put the egg in there and was just like, cook, you fool. Come food, you know? <laughs> and then I gave it to her and it was like this slimy thing. She's like, oh, you're really, you're really sweet. You're, you're, it's really nice that you did this. And I'm honestly more embarrassed about that egg than I am about the first time I had sex. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like that was, I don't know. That was like, I was, I was, and I was sort of like, no, 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 you shouldn't, uh, this is awful. I'm going to throw it away. And she's like, no, no, it's I'll, I'll eat around the uncooked part of the egg. You know, <laughs> like the, she's like, the bacon's fine. You did that. Okay. And it's, like, God, it's so, it's so fucking daunting. Yeah. Like, and it's the kind of thing that will like genuinely keep you up at night. Yeah. Like, You'll, you'll be like, I, I, when, when you, when you said like, let's do an episode on cooking that the first thing that popped in my head was that awful meal I made my parents. Why? Why? I, I cook every day. I cook all the time. And oh, yeah, the first you... thing that popped in my head was like the, my, this horrible guilt I have over feeding them salt meat. Do you remember your failures? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so fascinating. Like cooking is such a, is such a interesting sort of human behavior, mm-hmm. you know, also the history of it is incredible. Cause it, I don't know, it, it, it like f- f- what we eat through the ages reacts to what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and it's what you said about like, about how Instagram changes what people are cooking. You mm-hmm. know, if you can't take a picture of it, then why bother? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of the, the, the most popular foods right now are some of the prettiest and some of the prettiest foods right now aren't necessarily the things that are best for you. Yeah. Like I cook a lot and then I go to take pictures of it and I'm like, yeah, that sure is like chicken breast and broccolini. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I mean, I don't know. You look at like culturally, like, um, you know, the reason your, your, your foods teacher was like, here's how to make angel food cake is because in the 1950s, like mom would stay home and cook and she had all day to figure that out and to make, you know, whatever it is for her husband when he gets home from work. And that's probably the same reason your dad didn't know how to cook Yeah, is he got married to your, to your mom and she knew how to cook. And there was that, you know, but at the same time, uh, now it's like, I don't, I mean, how many women out there are sort of like, yeah, I don't know how to cook. Yeah, you know, because like, they're because they're working full time jobs. You know, it's like it, we we live in a very different era right now. It's also I think a lot of people. You know, when you move in with somebody, like I, I I've said this before, but I moved in with my wife and I took out the garbage, and uh, I've had to do that ever since. That's just been my job. You know, every now and then she does it, but it's yeah, mostly I, just like we just have we fall into roles, right? Um, and so I think that like where where it gets really terrifying is approaching cooking as this insurmountable thing and getting scared of it um is is something that i think is something you should avoid doing because it's 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 dangerous and it's off-putting for yourself and it's also i think you're really missing out on something that's potentially like way more fulfilling than you think it is yeah totally like it's there's a almost an immediate gratification to cooking something and then eating it and then going like, what worked there? What didn't work there? And what can I do again? At the same time, it's almost like punishment if you do something bad. Yeah. Uh, have you ever met somebody who loves cooking and is awful at it? Tons of people. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. my old roommate is one of the strangest dudes because he would watch, he, would, he loved like Anthony Bourdain. He'd watch yeah. Food Network shows all the time. I don't even watch that shit. I, don't, I, I actually think that food shows are kind of weird almost. Like mm-hmm. Anthony Bourdain's funny because he's kind of an asshole. But like, as far as like, I don't know, like the, I'd, I'd be at my friend's house and like, on, you know, I'd to, he'd turn on the TV and put on like, you know, Giada De Laurentiis or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you watching this? He's like, I love I like it when she makes lemon cupcakes. I'm like, what is wrong with you? That's weird. Go make them or go watch something interesting. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, my old roommate would watch these shows and he would be like, ah, uh huh, yeah. And he was, as we speak, he is, I believe, the youngest oral surgeon in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Sam, wonderful guy. Uh, weird cook because he would make something. He'd be like, I'm gonna make spaghetti. And he would make spaghetti, uh, and then he'd be like, "This could use some cream sauce as well." And he would have this. I remember distinctly this this like nightmare food. It was a, he had a giant frying pan, and he had he'd cooked he'd boiled spaghetti in there, and then he was stir frying uh, red sauce and white sauce, and then he was like, "This needs corn," and then he added corn, and it looked like John Carpenter's The Thing with food. It was the most. It was the, one of the worst things. And I had a. I think I had a bite of it. And I was like, "This is." horrible this is like when third graders defeat each other on dares this is a terrible terrible thing to eat and i don't get how he was like how he can watch like anthony bourdain or something and be like aha yes this guy's at it again he's talking about the importance of food and then 
go and make that. Well, because there is a there's a mastery in spontaneity that comes with professional chefs that gets lost on on sort of the common person. Like that's why when you're young, you should kind of stick to the rules. It's the same thing with painting, right? They're like you have to learn how to paint by the rules before you can learn to break them. Mm-hmm. Like when I went to art school, I was like, I want to draw abstract figures, and they were like, No, yeah, you have to draw regular people first, and then you can draw them right. weird. So he cooked the way Rob Liefeld draws. Yes, where he's like, yes. I like to draw guns and pouches and mm-hmm. muscles. Fuck the feet. I don't have time to learn how to draw feet. You like know? I feel like Anthony Bourdain could whip up a like a cream sauce spaghetti with corn in it and find some miraculous way to make that work. That's the entire concept of the show Chopped, right? It's them being like, hey, you have five ingredients and this is what you have to work with. And if you don't know how to make it with those things, we're going to vote you out and then you don't get enough money to find your sister's killer or whatever. So that's a, that's a, that's a weird show. It yeah. is a weird show. Um, I wanted to talk very briefly about um, tutorials because I think that like you know we haven't said here's recipes, but uh, we I, I mentioned the onion thing. Get a good knife and then look up a tutorial on how to cut an onion. I swear to God, it will teach you something you didn't know, and it's like a two minute YouTube video. That's kind of like the amazing point we're at right now, where instead of just having hand me down information or just having a go at it on your own and mm-hmm. hoping for the best. You can look up very, very basic, like how to make scrambled eggs, how to make, I, I looked up like Gordon Ramsay's egg, re- scrambled eggs. You don't look at like how to basic though. Yeah. That one where the guy just smashes throws, a bunch of eggs yeah. and throws macaroni at it. And so there's, there's definitely people who overcomplicate things and there's definitely people who do things wrong. There's a lot of videos online of people like making, tossing raw chicken with, uh, with like, with, with greens and, and making like a raw chicken salad and being like, cut them all up on the same plate. Shit, horrible shit like that. You know the one I'm talking about. But seriously, like go online, look up very basic. Like if, if you're like, how do I, how do I cut an onion? How do I, how do I chop celery? How do I chop a carrot? So many recipes begin with garlic, onion, celery, carrots, olive oil, very, very basic kitchen staples that you could, you should always have on top of having a good knife, get like the 10 spices that you need, get Mm -hmm. a cheap little spice rack or put them in a cabinet in your, in your kitchen. And then you'll immediately from there be like, okay, well, there's only so many things I can do. Uh, I'll get some meats and I'll get some vegetables and I'll, I'll cook them and then I'll combine them and I will have a meal. People always tell me that one of the biggest things that keeps them from cooking is time. Mm -hmm. Um, my go-to breakfast in the morning is two or three scrambled eggs, a chicken apple sausage that I buy like in bulk from Costco, and they're all really healthy. And then I get like these big ass bags of spinach. And with the spinach, basically I do it all in one pan. I take the chicken apple sausage, I cut it into like coins, and then I put them, I put it in a pan for like two two minutes, three minutes in each side. Those are like already cooked. They're already cooked, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take those out, put them on the plate. I take the, <laughs> take the spinach, throw it in there with a little bit of olive oil, olive oil salt, pepper, Flip it around for maybe 60 seconds, put that on the plate. Then I take the eggs, scramble them in a, in, a, in a bowl or just do them sunny side up, put them in the thing with a little bit of olive oil or some, some butter, salt, pepper, and then slide them off into the pan. That is one pan, one plate, one fork, put some hot sauce on it. It's all done in 10 minutes and then I wash it in two or three minutes mm-hmm. and then I'm out the door. And I don't have to eat like, you know, fucking Jimmy Dean's breakfast shit buttholes or whatever the fuck. Or like, you know, it's like terrible. Some like frozen ego yeah. bullshit. No, my um, my go-to for dinner is uh, I usually just do like a salad and chicken mm-hmm. um, and I'll, we'll get chicken thighs. That's one thing is people always, they're always like, chicken breasts are healthier and they also, um, they are so much easier to fuck up. Like you can dry them out really easily yep. and they also, they're just kind of bland. They can be very, very whatever but chicken thighs have like more fat in them which isn't that bad if you're, you know, being reasonable, whatever. You get chicken thighs, a uh, little bit of garlic, salt, pepper, uh, and either bake it or yep. fry it, whatever, saute it. You can throw it on the grill. It's super easy. It's, it's, that's, that's really it. I'll throw like thyme or rosemary in there. Maybe, yeah. um, maybe hot sauce, whatever, but it's effectively just salt, pepper, garlic, chicken. That's it. We, we joked about like the protein bro Instagram guy, but there's something to batch cooking, um, and taking a couple hours on a Sunday and just kind of like baking 10 chicken thighs at once or doing one of those like sheet pan dinners, which is basically just taking like a bunch of different vegetables, a bunch of different meats, olive oil, salt, pepper, maybe a little red pepper, some mm-hmm. garlic powder, putting it into the oven, 375 for about 40, 30, 40 minutes or something like that. You take it out and you have an entire pan of food that you can eat over the course of five days. Mm-hmm. There's something magical about that. It's also, it's so stupid how cheap that is. It really is. You save yeah. so much fucking money. It's it ridiculous. Really um, yeah. Also like, uh, I feel like a few little, little like cheat things, um, pressure cooker. We both yeah. have instant pots. Those things are 
Uh, I was I, we I had a slow cooker for a while, and mm-hmm. I was always like, it's like BitTorrent for food. You just put a bunch of ingredients in there, and you let it sit, and then you come home, and it's like, ding, this thing is ready. You're like, holy crap, that's so that's incredible and yeah. sort of legal. Uh, and then. I don't know. And then like the Instapot is like, I don't know what that's. That's like streaming food almost. You can put, you can put fucking uh, frozen chicken in there and half an hour later it's like cooked chicken. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's not, it's like a little, it's like a little bit rubbery, but for the, if you're in a hurry, just, yeah, you for, just, yeah. for like for a cheat code for frozen chicken, I'll take like a little rubbery because it's like, it's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like it's your, basically you take it out of your, your fridge. The other thing too about slow cookers and Instapots is that they, um, if you get a good one that does both, uh, you can basically leave it in the morning and come home and a robot will have cooked your food all day. Yeah. There's one that will like pair with your Wi-Fi, and you can control it with your phone. It's, yeah. it's stupid, but it's I've, like, I don't I've know. walked into my apartment complex and opened up the front door and been like, what is that incredible smell? Oh yes, that's me. I've been cooking all day without even being here. And I'm like, I'm out at work and I go do an episode of the comedy button and I come home and it's like nine o'clock at night. And my entire kitchen smells amazing because I put I put a whole bunch of ingredients in there beginning at the beginning of yeah. the day, and I made chili or something like that, which now I can eat all week. And that's something you can do cooking for one or cooking for two or whatever. Um, cheat codes, you know, like if you think about cooking as this thing, this terrifying thing where you, there's a big setup and a big teardown, and you have to do it all yourself every single night. Then yes, it's going to scare you. But if you look at it as a bunch of isolated acts mm-hmm. that you can sort of combine together to create wonderful delicious things that you can eat all week which will a save you money and b keep you from getting fat um it's pretty fucking awesome yeah which i really dig yeah no i mean i think that that the, the number one thing about cooking is don't be scared of it yeah. just get out there and start doing it and just just give it a shot so the one uh, last thing i wanted to talk about is the sort of um the kind of uh nostalgic nature of cooking um there's something really powerful about recipes that mean something to you significantly because they can evoke an emotion that um, just getting takeout or getting food delivered, you know, w- doesn't really uh, yeah. imbue. No, so you're kind of chasing that ghost of the thing you ate growing up. Yeah. Like in Ratatouille, yeah. when he eats that food and he gets excited by it. Right. And I think if you look at the end of Ratatouille, I was thinking about that movie recently because it's one of my favorites. Um, he he eats Ratatouille, the the, the, the the miserable food critic, who's just like the ultimate hater. He's the guy that everyone thinks runs rotten tomatoes right he's like he's he's just so disinterested and he's so above everything and he's snarky and he's constantly nitpicking and criticizing things you know he, he he's like he's the opposite of like the, of of fans in a lot of people's eyes yeah. right so uh, ratatouille the rat grew up on very simple foods he learns very early on that combining foods um creates something sort of you know magical and, and significant and different but for his last trick, he creates ratatouille, which is a uh, very simple peasant food. And the food critic comes in, and um, we're sort of seeing this nowadays with $4 avocado toast and shit like that, right? It's this idea of taking something that's very simple and very very basic and, and throwing it in like a mason jar or something, mm-hmm. or, you know, dusting the rim yeah, a little yeah. bit and making it look like it's this high class thing, you know? Uh, well, that's, I mean, that is, that is, I feel like the most significant thing in food, yeah. in, in, in cooking is when the thing that, the, the comfort food that you grew up with, that nostalgic thing, when you grow up, you're like, how do I get that? Mm-hmm. And I don't know, you see it in waves too, where like, I don't know, at one point, like lobster was poor people food. Yeah. And then yeah. gradually that turned around and like, yeah. Well, there's the, there was a restaurant that popped up a couple of years ago that a lot of people were upset about because they were selling uh, 40 ounces in brown paper bags for like 10 bucks. Um, and people were like, Hey, that's fucking bullshit. Like that's a, th- yeah, it's two fifty. Yeah. And like, I don't even want to get into the entire like cultural appropriation conversation. Cause with cooking, that's a whole nother can of worms, which you shouldn't open when cooking. Um, but that's definitely part of the conversation. But in terms of the nostalgic aspect of it, in Ratatouille, he makes Ratatouille, which is a very, very simple sort of vegetable dish um, where you cut them into very small sort of rings or circles um, and you arrange them all kind of like a circular lasagna. Mm-hmm. And he makes this for this guy and he feeds it to him. And he doesn't feed it to him because he knows Ratatouille was a food that he appreciated growing up. He feeds it to him because he knows that if you can nail a simplistic food like ratatouille, that you can build anything on top of it. And it immediately evokes this emotion in this miserable, sardonic critic to create this passionate uh, remembrance inside of him where he goes, oh, I had simple comfort food growing up. This connected me to that 
food is not necessarily always this thing that's like outrageous and over the top and expensive. Sometimes it can just be the simple comforting thing and this rat creates it and the, the critic falls in love with the restaurant, writes a glowing review and the movie ends. Yeah. Uh, growing up, my mom was, uh, the private chef for Bill Blass, the fashion designer for a yeah. while. And he was like retired dude who, you know, he was like, he, you know, he designed suits. He's a New York fashion designer, did all kinds of, you know, fancy shit. You'd think that he would be like, bring me the fanciest food. He's, his favorite thing was meatloaf. Yeah. And he would just be like, Hey, uh, you know, he'd be like, my mom, whatever. So you can just make, make some meatloaf, you know? And she'd be like, I, I ran fancy restaurants. I could do really anything. And he's like, no, nah, just meatloaf, chocolate chip cookies. Thanks. You know, it's, and it was it's, like, it's what his mom made. When you look at, um, you talk to like, or, or watch any documentaries about like, about cooking or chefs or like the line chefs and stuff like that. When they come into the kitchen a little earlier, they've been cooking all day and they want like a com- kind of comfort food wind down thing. It's always stuff like, burgers it's mac and cheese it's meatloaf it's grilled cheese sandwiches it's very simple very quick comfort food they can they mm-hmm. can make 10 or 12 of all at once you know yeah i um, think it's the misconception is that chefs are somehow like on a higher level when it's like there's still people they probably yep. don't want to make like a, a fancy bisque you know my uh my I've, I've talked about this a million times and i always will because it's one of the defining traits of who i am but i'm italian and my mom uh, is a it was an immigrant that came here when she was 16 and she has a very specific pasta sauce recipe with meatballs and everything um and it's that's that's one of the most uh pasta sauces or sauce in general is one of the most sort of interpretive things in all of cooking because the end result is almost very similar but everyone has a different way of doing it and a different order in which they do things and some people use fresh garlic some people use garlic powder i found out that my mom's recipe used very little or no red pepper and I, I cook red, I, I use huh. red pepper in everything. So I found that really fascinating. But she had this like coveted pasta sauce recipe and she would make it every Sunday growing up. She would wake up in the morning, she would walk into the kitchen, she would put um, some jazz or some Philip glass on the CD player and she would walk around. And I, you know, I slept downstairs, I had my own room in the basement. I could hear her pitter pattering across the kitchen and I would hear chopping and that was her cutting onions and celery and garlic. And I would hear sizzling, which was her cooking all these ingredients. And then everything would go in this massive pot, this big sort of like, you know, this big black with a big heavy lid on it. And she would cook this pasta sauce with meatballs in it all day, like four, five, six hours. And the entire house would smell amazing. And um, when she passed away last year, I got the recipe before she died and it was the kind of thing I'd gotten it a few years before she died actually. Cause I missed her. And in California, it was the kind of thing where I was like, I don't get to smell this anymore. She's not prancing around my kitchen, listening to Philip glass and making pasta sauce. So I was like, I'm going to make this myself. And I followed her instructions to a T and it was perfect. And then she passed away and I, I wanted to, I wanted to make it again, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And then mother's day came up and I was like, I want, I want to make something this weekend that reminds me of her and I know it's going to, it's going to wreck me like, which is weird. It's weird to, to have food make you cry that not just because of the onions. Right. Right. (laughs) But, um, I woke up early in the morning, I pulled up her recipe and her recipe is amazing because it has, it's not just a recipe. It's got sentences in it that she wrote. That's like, make sure you do this a little bit. And, you know, you should make enough for the whole family because this is the kind of food that should be shared with other people. Like there's, it's anecdotal. It's personal. It's not just like one cup of this, one quart of that, two pounds of this. It's, you know, there's, there's a, her personality is in the recipe. And so I have it printed out. I have it saved on my phone. I have it everywhere. And I, I pulled it up and I made it and I woke up and I started chopping the onions and the celery and the carrots and, um, it all started coming together and like that smell started forming in my kitchen and I immediately started crying. My wife hadn't woken up yet and she, she comes in and she's like, what, what's going on? Like, (laughs) did you fuck up? (laughs) Did she make a mistake? And I'm like, no, I'm just like, I, I, people think of like Ouija boards as ways to like conjure a ghost, but like they're recipes to a way better job. You know, I mean, you, you touched on the cultural appropriation thing for a second there. I think that food almost gets a pass if there's something like if you're making it because you love it Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't i don't know like like food is food is 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 cross-cultural like that's just that's how it is you know um and at the same time it's also it is culture it is it is how you 
you know, like the, I always think of that part from Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, which is not a politically correct movie by a fucking long shot. Um, but where they're like the, you know, the villagers bring out the food and, and the, the lady's like, I'm not going to eat it. And he's like, this is more food than this village has in a week. But at the same time, it's also like, that's their, that's their food. That's their, that's yep. their life. That's their culture. And then, you know, there's obviously the monkey brain delights dinner or whatever. Um, I'm marrying into a huge Vietnamese family. Vietnamese people eat some eat some weird shit. If you're a fussy white boy, mm-hmm. I'm thankfully not, and I eat everything, and they love that about me. Um, my fiance's ex would not. He would just sit there and just not eat it, and the thought of that just makes me livid and irate. And I think that there are, <sighs> there are a lot of people out there who are like who are picky eaters. We know our our good friend Ryan Scott is a very fussy boy when it comes to eating. Yeah, no, um, I have people in my family like that. Yeah, you know? I just, I can't, I can't. Like, I just, one of, it's one of those things where, I, it, to me, it, it comes as like, it's it's kind of an insulting thing. And it's also just sort of cowardice. Like, put the food in your mouth and mm-hmm. eat it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. if you get sick, like, okay, that sucks, but grow up, you know? I think a lot of people get very, they get scared about, like, food touching other food on the same plate. I saw this thing that was kicking around the internet recently where they're, they're basically like these, um, they're like dividers. <laughs> For, for food on your plate. It's and like it, cafeteria trays kind of. And it was like, oh, this will keep your, it was like, this will keep your peas and your spaghetti separate. And I'm like, well, those shouldn't even be on the same plate to begin with. You know? What, are you going to separate them into your four stomachs, you fucking cow? Like, it was, yeah, it was, I read into it and I realized that like, for some people, they're really picky. For other people, it's like, it's actually like a sort of an autistic spectrum thing where mm-hmm. they're, they fundamentally do not want to see those foods interact with each other. Personally, I think, Spaghetti and peas should never be on the same plate. Period. That's weird. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I totally understand that because I think there is there is an appropriation side of it, but also I think uh, there's it's also an opportunity to develop a tremendous respect for a culture mm-hmm. that you may not have an interaction with otherwise. And I think what we're seeing in America is a lot of the kind of um, I don't know this this sort of like stew, this cultural like me- melding of everything together, this melting pot as they used to call it. Um, which then they like I don't know if you remember they used to call America a melting pot. Yeah, and then they started calling it a mosaic, which meant that this was thousands of individual tiles that work together mm-hmm. to create one larger picture, and they're all different colors, and they don't necessarily all congeal into one soup. And I I think I appreciate that a little more. Um, neither truly work to define what we are as a culture here. But I think it's like, it's what's what, what gets very interesting is that you have people who take a recipe, misinterpret it, and then they make a business out of that misinterpretation. There's a, there's a Vietnamese restaurant quote unquote that opened up in Sonoma mm-hmm. that I, I am like, I hate so much. Um, they have, uh, they had like, Oh, it's like Saigon street tacos. And like, we went there, I don't, I don't know why. Like, I don't, I think my mom was like, let's go check this place out. And we went there and it was just like, it was, the food was like, it was fine ish, but like, they don't like, it was like, don't, don't make Saigon street tacos. If you're a white lady, like maybe, maybe just, I don't know, maybe get people, somebody from one of those two cultures. Like, you know, if it's Mexican Mm -hmm. or if it's Vietnamese, like maybe just get, get, do more research, you know, or, you know, name it something different. Yeah. Yeah. Make up a, make up a funny name. I think I like, I don't think you should be banned from cooking those foods or selling foods like that, but maybe like, I don't find your own voice in it. You know, like, I think that's the thing. Like I I make a lot, I make a lot of music that's inspired by hip hop. I'm not black and I didn't grow up in an inner city. I never plugged a boombox into a lamppost in Queens and rapped with my Mm -hmm. friends until the, the wee hours of the morning. But I, I find my own voice in, you know, sort of attributing the drum patterns from those lessons and creating something new. Mm-hmm. But I don't like I don't put out music that's sort of like, you know, I don't I, go, I don't go like, yo, hardcore gangster rap. Mm-hmm. Here's my new album called Hardcore Gangster Rap because that's that that wouldn't work. Right. Yeah. So I think it's like, yeah, you have to sort of pick and choose what works and what doesn't work and then and and fit it to your own lifestyle. But yeah, cooking is, I think, an incredible way to sort of in, inter, interface and appreciate cultures from all over the place. Yeah. I mean, um, food is food is life, you know, it's, yeah. and it's uh yeah, we got, we definitely, we, I think we wanted to record for half an hour, but here we are. Yeah, there's a lot to say yeah, here. Yeah, cooking um, is, just, everyone out there, just go, go, go and cook something. Yeah. Go, it's, it's, there's no excuse not to, you know. It, and put, you know, like, I'll, 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 I'll add this at the end. Um, I, I ended up making my mom's sauce that day, and it was fantastic, and I cried, and my wife was like, this is amazing. Um, but I also added red pepper to it, because I feel like it needed it. <laughs> so... 
I like Sorry, that. mom, but like I had to put a little bit of me in there too. I love that it's like the most like intimate, personal, touching thing, yep. and you're like, yeah, but I think it could use work, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Uh, well, that's Weird Heat. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, you can get more Weird Heat on our YouTube page or on our Patreon, uh, on our on our iTunes stream, anywhere you get this show. Uh, go to patreon.com slash weird heat and please, please, please support the show uh, because we put lots of cool stuff on there. Even just giving us a buck or two a month goes a long way so we can uh, buy onions. Yeah. Uh, worth noting, it's also we're kind of entering hell season here. You're about to have a kid. I'm about to get married. And uh, we both work in jobs where that have busy, busy summer schedules. So uh, I want to do so much more with this show. I want to do I want to do like recipe videos. I want to show yep. people how to cook. I want to make stuff I want and put it all somewhere associated with the show. But, um, you know, it, it's a finding time can be tricky. So, mm-hmm. you know, so thanks just, for sticking with us. Yeah. Through the, these deeply personal parts of our lives while we make a deeply personal show. So yeah. hopefully that we just come out of the other end of this with um, just more stuff to talk about. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not so going anywhere. It. I think that's everything. That's, um, the, that's the end of the show. Yeah. That's the end of the show. We did it. We cooked it. And yes. now you can eat it and it's done. Thanks that's, for watching. Ding. This is going to be easy. All you have to do is follow the recipe. Go ahead, try one. right, pour it in. Let's see what's next.